Okay, now let's tie this all together for proportions and show it to actually estimate a confidence interval using a single sample of results. In the last section, we defined the 95% confidence interval for the population proportion P, and we said it was given by taking P hat plus or minus two standard errors of P hat, where the standard error of P hat was given by that formula that involves the true population proportion. But the problem is we, we don't know that. That's why we're doing all this. Well, we can substitute P hat in that formula for the standard error to get an estimated confidence interval based on a single sample size n for by taking P hat plus or minus 2 times the square root of P hat times 1 minus P hat over n. So let's again go back to that example where we looked at the proportion of dialysis patients with national insurance in 12 countries. And let's hone in on France here. In France, there were 481 dialysis patients, sample of 481 dialysis patients, 219 who had health insurance, national insurance. So our sample proportion, our best guess for the proportion of dialysis patients in France who have national insurance is 219 divided by 481, or 46%. So by going through the mathematics to get a confidence interval, and you can follow the math on the screen here and try it on your own if you want, we get a confidence interval of 41% to 51%. So we estimated that 46% of dialysis patients in France had national health insurance, and after accounting for the uncertainty that we're dealing with a random sample of only 481 persons, we put an interval for the true proportion of nationally insured dialysis patients between 41% and 51%. And just like with continuous data, we can use data to do this for us. We can use the CII command for binary outcomes as well to get confidence intervals. And the syntax here, with we don't have to provide as much stuff. We can just give our total sample size and then the number of yeses or a number of outcomes in our sample. So the syntax is CII and then N, the sample size, and Y. I just called it arbitrarily Y. Why is the number of yes outcomes? So here's the results from that for the national health insurance example in France. Now, just one note. Notice when that column that says mean, it gives us the proportion. And a proportion really is a mean. You can think of it as a mean because if we were to give each of the yeses a value of 1 and each of the noes a value of 0 and then average them, we would, in fact, get that sample proportion. And then it gives the standard error, which is given by the formula, or estimated by the formula we gave of the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. And then it gives what's called an exact confidence interval. What we're using by hand is an approximation based on the central limit theorem. And that's what was, was the norm up until a few years ago. There is a way to create confidence intervals that is very computationally intensive, but with the speed and memory of computers now can be easily done. It's called an exact method. With large samples like we're dealing with here, though, the differences between what we get by employing the central limit theorem-based approximation or computer-intensive exact methods are, are minimal, so our results should concur. However, if you are using Stata, there's no shame in taking the interval it gives you instead of doing it by hand. Let's look at another example from the maternal infant transmission of HIV study. And remember, we had the proportion of infants in each of the other treatment groups who came down with HIV within 18 months after they were born. So let's focus on the placebo group where the P hat was 22%, the estimated proportion of HIV-infected infants born to untreated mothers, that is, infants who got HIV within 18 months of birth, was 22% based on a sample of 183. So if we plug in the numbers for this and create a confidence interval, we get a confidence interval for the true proportion of infants that will contract HIV from mothers who are not treated, they were in the placebo group, between 16 and 28 percent. So even though there's a lot of variability in that interval, 16 to 28 percent isn't particularly precise, it does give some information. It says, well, even in the best case scenario, in some sense, this proportion could be the lowest it could go at the population level. If we had left all HIV positive mothers untreated who were pregnant, that even in the best case scenario, roughly 16% 
of the babies would contract HIV. So this, even though there's a lot of uncertainty in this interval, it actually uh, sometimes there's information in the, in the bounds, and uh, this shows that there could be problems if mothers were not treated. And we'll come back to whether AZT can help with those problems, although many of you probably know the answer to that. And if you're interested, you can go and get the confidence interval for the proportion of infected infants for mothers who took AZT yourself and compare it. So let's just see how using the CII command would give us what it would do in this example. And if we type CII 18340, the exact confidence interval that the data gives us matches up pretty well with our hand computed. Sometimes this thing we add and subtract to get the confidence interval for a proportion is called the 95% error bound or the margin of error. And chances are you've heard the phrase margin of error kicked around before in regards to, usually it's used in regards to poll results, that this poll had a margin of error of 3%. What they really mean is that the bound form plus or minus two standard errors that would be added and subtracted from the estimated sample proportion to get a confidence interval was 3%. So it's kind of nice when you find out what something you hear all the time means, right? Anyway, in the next section, we'll consider what happens in smaller sample situations because, again, as with means, the central limit theorem approximation only works well with larger samples.